thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. I feel very much honored to be with you here, and especially having heard this very interesting talk before. I felt being at home because at my studies at Uni Technical uh, University in Aachen, my final thesis, my diploma thesis was on Lignitz, <laughs> and afterwards working in Eiffel, uh, we also found charcoal, so very interesting. And I want to take you with me also to an open-air cast mine. It's a metal pit. It's a World Heritage Site today, but it wasn't that many, many years ago. But so have a view into it, and I try to take you with me into the aspects of daily work, which type of conflicts can exist when you have this type of development and the development is not far away from what you have heard before because we are also talking about a former industrial site. Have a look here, you see the metal pit over there. It's in the middle of Germany, about 50 kilometers south from Frankfurt mine. And so, if you want to come over, you are hardly welcome to have a look. And when you see the landscape around, on the top photograph on the right-hand side, you see it's quite a flat landscape today. And also the Odenwald landscape is an ancient landscape, which is in a way, um, how to say, affected by glacial erosion but you cannot see it that way as you do it here around Cottbus. Um, there are still mountainous areas, but in the valleys you have even dunes, but dunes given by water flows. So, some relations. And another relation, the Messel pit you have in front of you now this is a view which you have. Some of you might already have seen it in the presentation in November. It's a former open cast mine. And you see the dimension here. It's more or less one square kilometer, northwest, southeast, uh, north, south, and west east. And the arrows you see. These are some of the locations where the scientific people today from the research institutes do scientific diggings. And as you already might have thought now by looking into that, this is what you really see when you look into the world heritage. So it's not a very spectacular view you have into this open cast mine, because it's also covered by vegetation today. When you look at it from the scientific point of view, you can identify that this is the geological structure, and here this area, this is the surrounding rock of the landscape, and you also see on the left-hand side, there is a sort of industrial site area where many people are surprised why it is there. But from what you have heard before in the presentation, you might now get an impression why it is so important to have a documentation on what happened or what is happening even today. Because all about this former cast mine is gone, except the deposits you have here, these are the deposits of the industrial former use. And the former use area is this area here, and there is no building, no machinery left. So by the activities of the industrial use, the metal pit was discovered more or less 150 years ago. So around 1851, something like that. But if they would not have opened this open cast mine, 
even today we would not know about the treasure which was and is inside. So there is a combination of getting to know something and then having a sort of development of a history that you identify even many, many years later that there is a special treasure for the human society. Okay, let's go ahead. And this is one of our treasures. This is a primeval horse or the dawn horse skeleton. And this, when you look at it, this is what makes the Messel Pit worldwide so unique because you have a complete skeleton, not just a tease, a, to a tooth or a piece of a bone or something else, what usually scientists find. You have seen, my colleague has presented a piece of an elk horn so this is usually what you find when you are a paleontologist and you look for ancient uh, organisms who exist maybe since the Earth's crust became litified. But this as a complete thing is something absolutely spectacular. And even here you do not have the head and the skeleton and the legs, you also have inside these animals or skeletons or fossils, you have tissue remains which tell you about what this horse has eaten when it lived more or less 48 million years ago. So this is a dimension. Well, the dimensions here of the lignin, I think it's Miocene. So around 20, 25 million years ago. So you are also in an area with tertiary sediments. Very interesting, but maybe you find different things. But I don't know about the findings uh, in the tertiary lignites here. So this is tertiary 48 million years ago. The tertiary starts as a formation at the time limit of 65 million years ago after the Mesozoic age. So this is quite important to get information not only about the organisms, also about by identifying what the horse had eaten about the environment. And when you I I've written here, the size of this small horse was like a dog. So when you look onto the horses we have today, there is a big jump. But in 48 million years, that can happen a lot. We don't know how maybe human beings may look in 50 million years, if they survive. So some of the specialities of the methyl pit, and you also see here, the tissues, the black things, which are organic remains in the oil shale. We do not have a lignite open cast mine, we do have an oil shale open cast mine. So these are the algae who are responsible for the organic deposits, which is very important. And this is also important because out of this material, you can generate petrol. Out of lignit, you cannot, because you have plant tissues as basis material, and here you have algae material where the content, the percentage of um, is, um, the abbreviation is H to oxygen, Hi, thanks very much. Hydrogen to oxygen here is very high, and in the lignit you have a high oxygen content um, related to the hydrogen content. But look here, this is a blossom of a plant, and here you see in between the very detailed pieces of the blossom which is enclosed. 
or here you see the beetles of 48 million years ago time and you see colors and these are colors you can see because the structure of the chitin body is not being destroyed. So the conservation status of the mesal fossils is so extraordinary that you can see many, many details which you usually don't see in this type and this age of material. Again here, this is a water lily. So this is the environment the scientists can interpret by the findings. So, where are the conflicts? This is a view into the site 1995, when it just became World Heritage. This is a view into the site at the beginning of the 20th century. You see the huge plant here, where the oil was generated out of the material. And you see the depths. It's quite uh, a dimension. And today, the depths from here to here, these are 60 meters. And this was quite a big, bit deeper. You see the area in the 1970s when this open cast mine was closed down because of economic reasons. Maybe some of you remind the um, oil crisis, the first in the 1970s. So, just to give you an impression, and after closing down, the politicians decided there is a big hole and at that time the waste disposal amount who was generated by our human society was enormous. And so people said at that time, well, holes in the landscape need to be filled. So we, um, how to say, we close the wound and the landscape is intact again. But many people, like those here, had already before visited this open cast mine, still when it was open and operating, and they found inside this material, this is the oil shale, this is a cutoff, this type of fossils, also those you have seen before. And so they said, no, we cannot accept that this shall become a municipal dump. But also many of these people out of the region, the Messel small town is about four kilometers away from that side, said we have had for 120 years industrial smoke, it was not very nice smelling. We want to have a different life. So they said, we fight against that. We want to have better living conditions for our families. Some of them said, okay, we want to save the fossils. But those who fought against this municipal dump mainly said, we want to improve our living conditions. So when you look onto the steps, the metal pit has gone. You can see we had first investigations and findings of fossil bones. First bones which were found in 1871 were crocodile bones. And at that time, nobody knew about our modern natural sciences. The people thought, oh, these are creations of nature. They look fantastic, but they look beautiful. So the Duke took them into his collection, into his private collection. This is the only reason why these crocodile bones even exist today but he did not collect them because he knew they were important. He enjoyed the beauty and being very special things. Then amateurs and scientists started in the 1960s to dig for fossils because they already had seen the complete skeletons were something very special. 
they also organized people who were interested to visit this site. Then the Messel people established a small museum in Messel itself. It was the old school building. So people showed that school and education and these topics were interesting topics for them. However, then in closing down in the 1970s of the mine, the people said, we need to fight against this municipal dump. And so they, they founded a so-called interest group and fought against this municipal dump for more or less 20 years time. After 20 years fighting against it because of a formal mistake which was identified, the whole municipal dump which was already constructed was stopped. There were 58 people who fought against this municipal dump and went to court. These people invested their private money in fighting against this municipal dump. Finally, in the year 1992, the state of Hesse bought this property before it was private ownership because it was an industrial area. Then the state made a contract with the Senckenberg Association or Society for Nature Research in 1992 and parallel created an administrative company 100% by the state to support whatever would be necessary to safeguard this property. Parallel, the scientists and others prepared the application to become World Heritage because meanwhile, by all these things happening, a lot of people have been digging for fossils at that site. And the scientists found out how special these fossils were and the importance of this fossil. And the importance of this fossil is, I told you, tertiary starts at 65 million years ago after the meteorite impact, more or less, today we say it was in Mexico, it happened, which destroyed 90% of all living organisms worldwide. So the methyl pit having fossils of 48 million years ago documents the stage of development of organisms 12 million years after this big event on the globe. So what you see from the fossils I have already shown to you, these are former organism forms which show the way to the today's flora and fauna. And when you take all the fossils we know from the methyl pit today, these are more than 50,000 findings. The scientists can draw up evolutionary lines of the horses, of the birds, of many, many different groups, which show the development up to the today's living organisms, which is very important because parallel to this by the scientific results, we know that the CO2 content 48 million years ago was three times more than it is today. So these are important things we get by the scientific investigations, which might help us to understand the changes we face today by climate change or by changes our dynamic Earth produces. So then, also, sometime after that, the people in the political level thought, well, it might be nice to have something directly at the location after being a World Heritage Site to show people about the importance of this site. 
And by that development in 2003, this administrative company of the state was changed into a three shareholder company to prepare a visitor center and two, to do the public presentation for the metal pit, not the scientific one. The so-called manager of the pit is the Senckenberg Society for Nature Research and this company is responsible for the public and outreach part and for all administrative things related with the state of Hesse. And finally, in 2010, we succeeded to launch the new visitor center at the Messel Pit. So which potential conflicts do we get out of this historical development? So we have more or less these 120 years of industrial use. You have seen the landscape looks different from a natural landscape. So we are in a cultural landscape. The residents fought against the municipal dump. 20 years of resistance in this type of um, case is something which people do not forget from one day to another. And in the 1970s, the 1980s, and the 1990s. These people invested, as written, is, is written here, their private money. Politicians told them you will get back your money. Would you forget that? Would you say afterwards, I want my money back? Do you think politicians give back the money to you? <laughs> so when you don't get back your money, what would be your feeling? You would be happy about that. So you can imagine these people who still live today are very angry about that situation because they feel cheated by politicians. But when they say the politicians cheated us, they will put the picture not onto the politicians directly because the politicians are gone. You know, we are in a democratic state, so it changes all years. But the institutions stay. So, with the institutions working on the site, we have the group of interested people fighting against the waste disposal dump. Even now, by being World Heritage, this is gone, but we have the people existing. We have the different institutions doing research who have rights since they started in the 1960s and 1970s. We have the administrative company. We have those who feel integrated in rescuing the metal pit. So everybody says, I have rescued the metal pit. And you have the new company being the youngest player onto the field, re being responsible to handle the situation in a way. So this is the picture we have. You have the old players and you have this situation as being the management situation, the Messel Pit being owned by the state of Hesse, the Senckenberg Society being responsible for scientific investigations and for managing the site as such. So you have seen the open air mine has no lake today. You have heard also in the former presentation, water is a big problem. The water is being pumped off even today. The metal pit is still under mining law today. So this means for us, for the public presentation, this is positive because we have points which are 
better for public presentation than being a nature protected area where you are not allowed to cut off trees, for example. In a mining area, you have to cut off certain areas because of safety reasons and and and. And when you imagine the hole you have seen today being a green hole, no visitor could identify the methyl pit as being a former open cast mine. And for visitors, it is important to see the history. If it is green and you don't identify anything, hmm, more difficult than anything else, because we are talking about a geological heritage, a geological treasure, not about plants today, which you can identify when you have a vegetation cover, or animals of today, which you can see and touch. This is important when you talk about geological heritage, because usually today's society has a direct contact to animals of today and to plants of today, but not to those things who do not live since millions of years, or to rocks, because people think they are dead, because their changes you can notice in thousands or millions of years, but not in 100 years' time where usually human beings live. So also there, observation and documentation is important. And you see here, in the third column, the demands which are given by the new players and the contacts coming and by the society who wants to use the World Heritage Site by visiting it. So how to deal with that situation? Well, it's not a problem to give information about the aims for public presentation, for how to use the former open air mine and to do communication with new offers. But two, it's important to look for guides and to have guides out of the region. But then also, you can integrate people who have or who are part of this development into the development of new structures like the visitor center. All people were invited to contribute. The question is, do they come? Or do they have something in their mind and say, well, no, we don't want that. But if the majority of those who want to develop a new structure, have different imaginations, the majority will decide what will happen. Maybe you don't solve the conflict, but you invite the people still and go ahead. You can integrate these people, like also the infrastructures existing, like the Messel Museum, into the new products and tell them, okay, we will have visitors who would like to visit your, your museum. Will you have service times when we have the people here? When they say, okay, no, this is our lunch time, we will close. You see, there are different topics which come up to you trying to solve conflicts but if you don't offer this, you have no chance to get progress. So you also can acknowledge achievements these people have contributed. Midterm, for example, when you plan activities, you can propose doing trails connecting the sites. So walking from Messel four kilometers to the Messel pit. You see, you do not only have the content of the unique site, 
you also have logistics, you have public transfer, you have infrastructure, you have service, you have so and so. You can think of establishing strategic partnerships and networking, for example, with the kindergarten or with the elementary school. This is important because across the children, you get the grandparents because the grandparents are the people of the interest group who fought against the municipal dump. Because also when you try to invite these people to come, they will tell you something and maybe they are not so um, very well informed about the newest scientific publications as for example, we get them because we go into internet. So you might get some discussions on, is this really the newest version you tell people when you have visitor groups? So these are points you need to take into consideration in having this type of conflict, because also when we go back having this here, you do not only have these people in the group who really had an enormous civil courage to fight 20 years against this dump. You also have scientists here and scientists there who are at the base of research and who think this is my research, they need to present my research and why don't they do present my research? But do you think you would understand computer tomographic diagrams when we present them to you to indicate how important the evolutionary development of the bats is? What would you guess? So having this, we try to decide what is the situation. The mesal pit is the youngest player on the field, the mesal pit does not have an own collection of fossils, shall not have an own collection. So the new visitor center needs to be different. It could not become a new museum. So it was decided to become a communication platform, a place for people, for visitors to meet and to exchange and to be enthusiastic about the World Heritage Site with the unique findings and their information they give to us. And we started and said, we start with the aesthetics. This is something emotionally which gives impress impression to people and makes them being fascinated of the topics. We said we need to integrate the research and we need to get a socio-economic development because as a non-profit company, we are not being financed 100% by public money. In the moment, we are financed 45% by public money, and the total budget per year is about 1 million. So this is what the rest, what we have to generate by our activities. And these are the topics we have chosen and proposed topics of geodiversity, not only topics of the fossils. We have said we need to show a holistic view onto the site because there is an industrial heritage. There is landscape as the basis of what happened because without the volcanological processes, without the phreatomagmatism, Messel pit never ever would have existed. And you have follow up processes. So here the development to today. And in between these conflicts, because also these discussions here in the beginning, everybody said we don't need nothing, anything at the site, we have a museum four kilometers away, but imagine yourself, when you visit a site, would you, when you have once parked, got out of your car, 
visit something, go four kilometers away and show something additionally? Huh. If there wouldn't be a good reason, you wouldn't do it. So the question is how to get closer and to bring things together. And the point is in the beginning, at the pit, there was no regular access into the metal pit. And when we started in 2003 with a new company, in 2004, we said we need to be on site to welcome people, to give them regular access. But money was rare, the infrastructure and the company was new. So we said, okay, we start small and we improve. But even this here, trying to get a professional approach, people laughed and said, oh, this is nice, where do we get a sausage? Now imagine yourself in this position. What would you say? Would you say, unbelievable, you are crazy. Well, then you have a new conflict because people feel not being respected. But from their point of view, it's just, oh, what's that? It's unusual. Um, is it serious? We come back to the point of being serious. And integrating activities already existing. So also for the scientists, in the beginning it was not easy because they said, we do our scientific work, we do not want to be disturbed. And we also do not want to be watched like apes in the zoo. And you can imagine groups of people walking aside along here, they making a break in the sunshine, the visitors say, ha, ah, that's a life, we would like to have two sitting for one hour in the sunshine. <laughs> and those who work here listen that, hear that, visitors saying that. So they get angry and say, this is crazy, we want and need a break, we have been working here since hours. So these are points happening. But when you come back and want to solve the conflicts, you need to think what can be a new way, how to see upon that, try to find out which new ways, new aspects, new perspectives could be in relation to that topic. You see here, for example, because you cannot ignore this wars, this is today, how may it be tomorrow? But this is a positive approach. Maybe tomorrow there is an ocean. Also by these perspectives, past, present, future, you can raise interest of people and make them think because it is them who need to take responsibility in that and also need to come to a respect as well as we need to respect the achievements others have already brought in. So the logistics of today we have, this is a pit again. You see again here the former or still existing deposits areas, which will also disappear in probably eight years. This company will have finished and taken all deposits. Here again, the former plant area. This is a new visitor center here. The metal pit is surrounded by a fence. So nobody can enter except he cuts the fence. This also happened many years ago, but today there is a control who checks all that. And so by that, this is not a conflict. But there is a hunting in the metal pit and the hunter is allowed to shoot the wild boars. So usually it is no conflict, but for example, last year we had for the first time within the existence of the World Heritage Site that the site was closed because of hunting. An interesting thing. So this is a new concept based on the oil shale, you see it here. 
And also this, changing the perspective, is something which is new for people. I just want to give you some impressions of the new visitor center. We are talking about volcanism. We are talking about interpretation about rainforest 48 million years ago. This is an info point where we have hidden some of the information so that visitors can choose what do they want, how much details do they want. This is our treasure chamber highlighting the fossils in a different way, not showing a tomb, not showing dark atmosphere, because all scientific results show the methyl pit stands for development of life. Development of life up to today, in a way. And emotional impressions making them becoming discoveries, not teaching. So the point with the people of the generation before us, even me as well, being nearly at a certain age, I have learned and I've been taught in a totally different way than you have. But even in our generation, nobody wants to be taught. You want to discover by your own. You want to pick up knowledge because you are enthusiastic about topics. But many of the people from, for example, the interest group, they wanted to teach people. When we started in the beginning, they said, well, this World Heritage Site is nothing for children because they cannot estimate the value. So they did not do any guided tour for children. By what I show you further on, you will see up to today they have changed their mind, which is positive. So, the integration of conflicts, topics into the tourism products, in each of our tours, we highlight the achievements of the people who fought for the methyl pit. But we also highlight the achievements of the scientists because we also want to support how important it is to do research on and in natural sciences. Because otherwise, politicians like to cut down basic research, which is very important even today or still even more important than it was. Because as you too have seen, there are new methods who are developed during the last 20 years who people never ever thought you could do in the 1960s. So then you need to also make obvious to visitors why it is important for them to know about these achievements of the people. It is bringing the human society together, showing people there are chances, show there is a possibility to change things. Well, it takes time. Even in human lifetime, some things may not be changeable, but you need to believe in it. And it is always a type how you do it, the tone in which you do it, that you can win people and make people becoming a fan of the topic you are working on. The spectrum of us offers, so we integrated also for groups and told them there is a museum four kilometers away from us, go and visit it. Because this was for us a point to say to the colleagues, well, there are groups that are interested, but you need to open your museum at lunchtime. People will come. <laughs> Service quality. When you ask people for support because um, your capacity is off, people are open. They feel being acknowledged. They feel being respected. 
which is important. Guided tours, integration of these topics in the new visitor center. Believe me, there are many people in the discussions on the thematic rooms we have developed for the visitor center who said, why should we integrate the geological, um, the industrial heritage into this World Heritage Site. But it is part of the World Heritage Site, even not being the outstanding universal value of the site. But you can integrate it. Also fighting, also the actual development, and it's interesting for people to see are there changes, what has been changed, who is financing all that, because a lot of people think UNESCO is financing that. UNESCO gives a certificate, but no finances. And common presentations with partners, even if it is not easy, because different generations have different imaginations, for example, for exhibitions. But it is possible. It takes time. So hopefully next year we will have, after 12 years of existence, an exhibition with one of the people of the interest group doing paintings, doing paintings on the development of the metal pit, the fight, the rescue, and then work today. And having additionally photographs, former photographs of the plant where people have been working. So this will be something big and the people will also feel being uh, respected. So, as I told you, try to see the holistic setup. And you see the different generations are our main target groups who pay and by this support the further development of our activities for your children and your children's children. So this will be a good thing. And when we have all age groups, which are main focused onto their life of today, they are not looking like people have been looking 50 or 60 years ago. And you see already two of our cartoons who play an important role because they are part of the educational concept. And I told you in the beginning we had many discussions, what is serious? When I say the hardliners, don't misunderstand me. But you can imagine people um, being enthusiastic and achieving really to build up a museum on the local basis. This is something which is very, very hard. And it is superb, they have done that already in the 1960s. It was very high contribution personally. And most of them came from academic positions, for example, mainly teachers. But you know yourself, teachers are a special group of people, even in our society today. So teachers think they are always right. So it's not easy to convince them doing things in a different way. And so by having the changes in our society, by having different perspectives from the scientific point of view, we said we need to develop a new concept, how we do our education and tourism offers. So we said we need to integrate information, we need to integrate movement, we need to integrate an, a, a creative part, a cultural part and a scientific part. So you know yourself, when you have children at an age of seven years, they want to move. So how to make them move and picking up information which you think they should know, or to make them aware of the importance of something where they are. So these are poems, you can show them how moved the small horse, how moved the crocodile, things like that, they will pick up additionally to other information you give to them. So by these new tools, 
We parallel develop merchandise articles, and we use also the articles, for example, the museum in Messel had already, and some of the museums in Darmstadt and also in Frankfurt had. So we sell their books parallel to new things. The type of interpretation also was changed, and you see by that there is a combination. This was how the world looked, and this is how the digging happens. And the Queen of Time, which is a new development for the children and also for the adult people, her body is a sand watch. You see the sedimentation going down and you see the hair has the colors of a morning dawn. So we try to integrate aspects, making things working. And here some other figures of the time travel crew. This is Odo Odenwald. So these are the granite blocks who were formed by glaciation processes, the granitic material you have, Wolzak erosion. And so this combination, we try to transfer information. And when you get into the discussion, is this serious or is this not serious? Because scientists are often very special in having this type of things. But when you don't have things where people feel emotionally touched, you have no link to get them and to be gripped into a topic which they usually say this is a dead topic. In my own activities, when I started working in this region of geoparks and world heritage, in one of the discussions with the tourism people, somebody said to me, well, all these ter uh, terrible rocks, they are dirty, ugly, and dead. And I said, well, this is a point of your position looking onto them. When you look onto these rocks in a different time frame, they are quite very dynamic. But this is what you need to transport them. You see some examples from other parts of the world. So the strategic collaboration, because by exchanging and discussing with people, you need to give a frame where you say this is a limit now, because also in doing guided tours, when people discriminate others, you have to say clearly my position is you are not allowed to do that. If you do that, we will not take you as a guide. This is also important. But the question is always do you shout at him? Or do you sit together and say, well, we have some points, this and this happened, what would you say? So these are our partners in really a stable position. And this is a new development because by also getting funding money, you can, how to say, make closer connections when you share money, not saying you are the best, but telling, okay, we are partners on eye level and we try to do together a big progress uh, establishing the World Heritage Site as a lighthouse for the whole region of the Odenwald. And by that, strengthening the tourism aspects. Because usually people and also politicians would say, well, we are a World Heritage Site. Everybody should admire us. Everybody should know us. But if you are not active, and you have certain structures, as you have said before, the mining law is a strong law. Our modern world has also frames. So the tourism frame is, if you have no marketing structure, why should others market us? So the marketing goes across the destinations. So we need to be with the destination because otherwise we would need to pay for everything what the destination does. This would be a tremendous amount of euro we would have to finance, which we cannot. 
Now we share and we are together with our partners. The partners promote us. You will find in the back leaflets from our partners. So we take our partners with us, they take us with them. Some aspects of that, what makes us being into products, into advertisements, into sale, because we cannot do all that hiking or experiencing culture. We do not do a cultural brochure, but the destination does, and the metal pit is inside the cultural brochure with so and so many pages, more in their brochure on eating and drinking of the region. The metal pit is inside. See some of the examples here. And again, it is to integrating all the partners at the site, having had some problems with the youngest player on the site. So we do this edition usually 30,000 per year. So all our partners here are marketing with us together. So that's quite something. So when you look onto the results, you could say in doing this from 1992 to 2003, there have been 55,000 participants in guided tours. And from changing this into a new approach and integrating the others and bundling things, we have six times the amount and people really can say they are part of what has been developed. And you see these are seven full-time people usually up to 10 and there are additional people in the partner institutions who do their work. I have told you about the budget, also about the percentage, and many people ask for the benefit for the people. They are part of the region, they are part of the actual development. And so they can be pried because they are in a region with, which is so unique even if it is a hidden treasure, but if they go closer to get to know it, they really will find out how valuable their contribution is and what also their families have already contributed. And the best sign, I think, is that they bring their friends visiting them to us now they don't come one time, they are returning visitors. So we think this is very, very good. And by that, we say you can solve conflicts by really following the World Heritage philosophy. Together we are strong, together we enjoy life and human community because we need human community. Our future and to serve the needs of future generations gives also all of us pride and well-being and hopefully a peaceful together. And dive into times at the Messel Pit, you are heartily welcome. Have a look, this is a different perspective and we are looking forward to share and to experience and to exchange these experiences with all of you and hopefully all of us will have a peaceful future time. Thank you very much for listening.